Many Chinese paper makers have told me there are 72 steps in making paper, from selecting the proper trees or shrubs in the forest to the final bundling of the finished paper ready for market. In between are the myriad processes that include stripping, soaking, cooking, beating, sheet formation, pressing, drying, and finishing. The most dramatic step is the mysterious moment when a pulpy, amorphous mass is suddenly transformed into a cohesive sheet of paper. As we shall see in this video, there are two basic ways of forming a sheet of paper, namely. Pouring the pulp onto a screen, or dipping the screen into the pulp. Either way, the pulp coalesces into a mat of cellulose, and a sheet of paper is formed, seemingly a magical event. Now, within these two methods of sheet formation, there are many variations, of which we are presenting nearly thirty. Some variations are the result of the development of papermaking through the years and through its spread to other parts of the world. Other differences occur because of the materials used or the purpose for which the paper is intended. All the papermakers shown here represent unbroken traditions of papermaking, many going back in time dozens of centuries. A few, even to the origins of papermaking in China, over 2,000 years ago, the scenes of sheet formation were selected from tremendous quantities of movie and video footage. The result of 38 field expeditions by Elaine and Sidney Koretsky, spanning more than a quarter of a century, from 1976 to 2002, in 43 countries around the world. We are starting in Hotan, an oasis city in the extreme northwestern part of China. Here's our papermaker, Mrs. Razihan. You see her through a smoky haze. It's the mulberry fiber cooking on an open fire. She's showing us a simple, straightforward method of sheet forming. She's squatting on the ground as she pours her hand-beaten mulberry pulp into a wood framework, on which cloth is stretched. When the sheet is finished, the mold is left to drain and then to dry in the sun. And this is typical of all of the traditional pouring methods that we'll see throughout Asia. Now, watch carefully. Mrs. Razahan pours a bowl of pulp onto the surface of the mold. Quickly, she takes a small pronged wood stick and twirls it through the watery pulp, distributing the pulp evenly. When she decides the sheet is formed properly, she uses that same pronged stick to raise the mold from the water. We see a similar method in Sikkim. Mr. Cho Sum is put a small ball of pulp into a wood tube. Now he's adding several cans of water to the pulp, which was hand-beaten Daphne fiber. And there are no other additives. He's mixing the pulp and the water in that tube. The tube is very similar to the Tibetan jatom that he uses when he makes his yak butter tea. Now he pours the whole tube mixture into the mold, and he's using one hand to disperse that pulp over the surface of the mold. With his left hand, he's holding the mold to keep it steady. Now he lifts up the mold to drain, and watch he's draining it right back into the pool. There's a scarcity of water here. Now our scene shifts to northern Thailand. Again, we see the pouring technique, but here the vat is raised and the paper maker stands. She just pulled apart a ball of mulberry pulp and put it in that tube. And then she starts dispersing the pulp in the tube with water. She's using a pronged wood stick. Now she pours the pulp onto the mold and watch her 
hand motions carefully while she disperses the pulp. First she worked very vigorously. Now she's slowed down and she's ending with a kind of patting motion. And that sheet is finished. We are in Bang Som now at the papermaking house that was the same one that Dard Hunter documented in 1935. Mrs. Injacole just put her mold into the canal. It's truly a floating mold. It's almost about to float away. She just put a handful of koi pulp into a basket and now she's dispersing the pulp in the basket using canal water. She pours the basket of pulp in, onto the mold and now at the same time she disperses the pulp on the mold. Now she takes some more water and just sprinkles it over the whole mold. She does a little more dispersing and then lifts the mold from the canal and passes it to her sister, who rolls a dowel over the sheet of wet paper. In central Burma, we watch Kin Ma Ma making rice straw paper. She weights down her mold on two corners, and she just put a ball of pulp into, no, she's about to put the ball of pulp into that brass bowl. Add some water to it. And now she's using a pronged wood stick. It's just like the one we saw in Northern Thailand. Uh, she uses that stick to disperse the pulp in the bowl. To make the pulp, she soaked rice straw in lime and water for five days, steamed it for 36 hours, and then beat the fiber for eight hours in a foot-operated stamper. She's poured the pulp now onto the mold and quickly disperses it. She doesn't pat it down as we had seen in northern Thailand. Each papermaker has his own technique for this. Now she's picked up a wood stick and draws it over the surface of the pulp. Finally, she removes the weights and very slowly she lifts the mold out of the vat. You can see the water draining. The sheet is finished and that will dry in the sun. In another village, just a few kilometers away, we are about to see the formation of the most unusual handmade paper that I've ever seen being made. And the process of sheet forming is the longest I've ever witnessed. It's more than 10 minutes time for one sheet of paper. This is the bamboo paper that is used as the substrate for the beating of gold leaf. Tun Shui has placed his mold in a shallow concrete vat and is clamping it at the four corners. The mold rests in a very small amount of water. Right now he's just picking off a bit of dried pulp from the corner of the mold. Now he sets a brass bowl that contains water and a smaller brass bowl. He drops a ball of pulp in the larger bowl and he's pulling the pulp ball into pieces. There's water in the bowl and he's actually dispersing the pulp as he's working on it. In the background, we hear the rhythmic beat of the young women who are burnishing the finished paper. There's in an underground chamber that's very nearby. 
Now Tun Shui fills the bowl completely with water. And he also uses a pronged wood stick to disperse the pulp. The pulp is made from bamboo fiber that was soaked in lime and water for five years, then beaten by hand for 15 days. Well, the pulp will be poured down onto the mold. Now he's pouring it. And see how he uses up every bit of pulp. Now watch carefully the various hand motions that he uses. Each step is done very deliberately and the motions in each step vary. There are two little girls that keep popping in and out here. They've seen this process every day of their lives, but now that they're foreigners, uh, they're very interested. Our paper maker has just picked up a stick, which he's going to draw over the mold, but he puts it in some water to wet it first. And now he's taking off the water drops from it so that none of them will drop down onto the sheet that he's making and he taps that stick over every part of the sheet. Now he's placing another stick across the mold. It's to keep the sides from bowling in. And he's starting to release the clamps from the corners of the mold. And he's also putting wedges at the corner. This will help the drainage of the pulp. It's important to keep in mind that the drainage of this pulp is very, very slow. Incredibly slow, actually. It's due to the 15 days of beating, which could probably translate to 10 to 12 hours of beating in a Hollander. Meanwhile, he's putting in more wedges to raise the mold a little higher. The mold is high enough now so that he can run a stick underneath the mold and he's helping the drainage of it.
He's running a pointed tool around the perimeter of the mold. This will help later on when he removes the paper from the cloth of the mold. And finally, the drainage has finished at this point and he puts the mold on the side and he's draping a piece of cloth over the back of the mold and he presses it gently with his hands. This takes out some of the water. He rings, he rings out the uh, cloth and he repeats that rubbing with the cloth uh, twice more. It will absorb a lot of water. And then he's finished with that and the mold will be put out in the sun to finish drying. In Yangon, we see another type of paper making. This worker has just dipped his mold into a vat of pulp and he's throwing on handfuls of pulp to fill in the thinner parts. This technique I call anything goes. It's distinctly a non-traditional method that we saw only once in 1982. After that, the factory bought a paper machine. And the pulp he's using is recycled junk paper of all sorts. And the finished product will be cardboard that's used in construction work or for wrappings. He's placing a thin sheet of cotton on top of his paper before couching it. And while it's draining, he stirs the vat in preparation for the next sheet. Now he couches the sheet and he'll start another one. In the same little factory, we see another worker making the same type of paper, and he's smoking a cigar, but he's using a deckle box technique. This was introduced from India, where it is also non-traditional, but it began there after India's independence in 1947, encouraged by Mahatma Gandhi. We noticed the worker's cigar ashes fell right into the pulp, but apparently it made no difference for this type of paper. Now he takes off the decal and he will cooch the sheet. Our last sequence of pulp pouring takes place in southwest China. It's, it's in a remote, mountainous, incredibly beautiful area in the province of Guizhou. Many minority peoples live here, and our paper maker comes from the Dong nationality, and they've lived in here for hundreds of years. The Dongs have a method of sheet formation that is the most unusual that I've witnessed so far in China. As we see here, the mold floats in space, not in water. The entire method of paper making is simple and direct. Our paper maker, Mrs. Nei Wing Cheng, collected mulberry in the forest, stripped the bark, and cooked it in wood ash. Now, just before making paper here, she went back to the forest and gathered some kiwi branches. She beat the branches with a stick for a few minutes and put them in a pail of water. And while the sap from the kiwi was oozing, which created an excellent formation aid, she beat the mulberry to a pulp using a wooden <laughs> mallet. Then she put the pulp in a bucket, added water, stirred it well, and then poured it into the formation aid. And then stirred that all very thoroughly with a stick. She wetted her mold 
and suspended it in air, as we see here. It's hung on a hook on a bamboo tripod. So to form the sheet of paper, she simply used a calabash and then a small plastic container to ladle out the pulp onto the mold. After each dipperful, she quickly manipulates the mold to spread the slippery pulp evenly. She moves it back and forth, sideways, each way, right to left, left to right. And after that, uh, this uh, paper will be put in the sun to dry. Now the Dong people had no written language, and the paper they make has never been used by them for writing. It has many other uses, notably in burials and for insulation, clothing, hats, and so forth. Now Mrs. Cheng is finished. She's unhooking her mold, and she puts it in the sun to dry. In Borsang, we see sheet formation with elements of both the dipping and pouring methods. These people are dipping a very simple mold into a vat of mulberry pulp. It's one quick dip, and that's all. No cooching and no pressing, just like in the pouring method. Now, when I started making paper in the 70s, this is exactly how I made large sheets, but I felt too embarrassed to admit it. Now all of our scenes shift to the dipping method of sheet formation. Our paper maker is adding formation aid right now. It's made from the shavings of the bark of a local tree. And he has set up his mm -hmm. workshop on a rocky ledge right in the Shangan River. The roaring in the background that we hear is the rushing water of the river. His mold is just a simple wood frame with a bamboo screen. And he's making spirit paper, which will be the same type of paper as we see in the next two scenes as well. He uses two dips. It's one dip toward him and one dip from left to right. And that's it. So watch this, one dip toward him and one dip from left to right. In Lushan, the paper maker also uses a two dip technique, but it's a little different. He dips the mold toward him first and then from back to front, followed by a twisting motion. In Shangqing Go, we see three dips. With the first dip, the far side of the mold is dipped and a layer of pulp is pulled up. On the second dip, the front side of the mold is dipped. And in the third dip, it's the far side of the mold that's dipped again and the excess water is drained off there. He also uses the formation aid. Here it's hibiscus maniote. Zifang is a little different. Here, the mold has two deckle sticks to keep the bamboo screen down. No formation aid is used. The paper maker actually submerges the mold and keeps it in the pulp to make a thick sheet of paper. The pulp is wheat straw that was cooked and then it was beaten mechanically. And the finished paper is very coarse with a lot of unbeaten fibers visible. This paper is used for lining coffins and wrapping gunpowder for firecrackers. In Beijing, the paper maker picks up just a little pulp on the far side of the mold then he dips the mold toward himself and picks up a full layer of pulp and then shakes the mold on the far side. The result is a sheet of paper with one slightly thicker edge. 
and this will help to separate the sheets after pressing. No formation aid is used here. The pulp in the vat is recycled paper, but they also make mulberry paper in the same way. Now you see that pulp on the far side is thicker. You can actually see it on the screen. In Vietnam, we found the town of Dong Cao, outside of Hanoi. Here they make special paper for block printing and other artwork. The paper maker uses the traditional bamboo screen on a wood frame with a U-shaped decal. And it's just as Dard Hunter had witnessed in 1934. They make their pulp from mulberry fiber and they use a formation aid obtained from the leaves of a local tree. Now watch her form the sheet. It's one dip toward her, then a shake-shake, another dip toward her, now a shake-shake, and then she throws off the excess at the back. Then she, before she cooches it, she rests the mold for a moment on the surface of the pulp. You have to watch this very closely. Now she's just done it. That motion will help her release the paper from the screen. But watch her closely to see all of that, those actions. We located two more paper making houses right in Hanoi, but they no longer used the traditional molds. Instead, they use a flat wove mold and make paper from recycled waste paper pulp. The sheet formation is just a quick dip in the vat, almost a careless motion. What? You have to watch her very closely. It's hard to see what she's doing. There, she's just did it and then the sheet of paper is cooched onto a thin piece of cotton. We return to China now. Look at the back of that mold. It's two inches high. The screen is bamboo with two decal sticks. The pulp is mulberry and formation aid is used made from the root of a pine tree. Now the sheet formation is one deep dip toward the paper maker, then much sloshing against the back of the mold. And at the end, he hits the back edge of the mold on the surface of the vat. And I think that's to help release the front edge of the sheet when he's cooching. See, he just slapped it against the surface of the vat. Our old friend Shi Fuli is the paper maker here in Mar Village. Notice that the mold is counterbalanced with one rope and has just one decal stick. He uses either mulberry or bamboo pulp and uses a formation aid made from the leaves of a local tree. The paper in this village is called Xuenza, used for calligraphy and artwork. Now to form the sheet, she fully pulls the mold toward him to pick up a layer of pulp. Now he's dispersing it over the screen. And then he picks up a thinner layer starting from the opposite side, from the back. We returned to my village eight years later and interviewed his son, who is forming sheets exactly like his father.
In Ten Chong, we see the mold counterbalanced with two ropes, and there are two deckle sticks that actually clamp down on the bamboo screen. The pulp is made from various bark fibers, and the finished paper is used for writing and for artwork. Now to form the sheet, the paper maker draws the mold toward her to pick up the first layer of pulp, but the subsequent layers are all picked up from the back of the mold. Here in Fuyang, the mold looks a little different, possibly because the sheets of paper are so large. The pulp he's using is Canadian wood pulp or a pulp made from a local reed. The finished paper is still considered a fine art paper, Schwenza, and no formation aid is used here. To form the sheet, the paper maker makes just one dip and then lets the pulp settle on the mold. And he finishes with a slightly rocking motion. In Sichao, we find another development. The mold frame is now made of two parts, hinged together with the bamboo screen held inside. We are told this type of mold goes back 90 years here. The screen is bamboo, but right now it's covered by a wove screening to keep the laden chain lines from showing on the finished paper. The paper maker scoops up thin layers of pulp, and the whole process is very much like what the Japanese call nagashizuki. I don't know the Chinese term for this. The pulp he's using is mulberry with a formation aid. In Ogawamachi, Japan, we see what is now the usual method of Japanese nagashizuki sheet forming. The use of a hinged mold here also started about 90 years ago, as in Sichao. Essentially, the paper maker pulls the mold toward himself, picking up a thin layer of pulp and disperses it over the bamboo screen. He keeps repeating this action as many times as needed for the thickness of the sheet he's making. We've noticed in visiting other Japanese paper makers that they may show variations in their actual style of working, but the principle remains the same. The fiber used here is paper mulberry and the formation aid is hibiscus manio. That's called terora aoi in Japanese. In Taiwan now, the paper makers are Chinese, but they started their handmade paper mills after the Second World War, and they seem to have been influenced by Japan rather than China. They make paper for the Japanese market as well as for the Taiwanese. And for fiber, they use the Japanese trio of Kozo, Mitsumata, and Gampi. We see the Nagashizuki method here exclusively. The paper maker is putting a string across the sheet to help later on in separating the pressed sheets. The formation aid they use here is made from the root of a local tree. In Korea, we see a similar situation to Taiwan. Again, the sheet formation is the Nakajizuki style. And I've learned that this method of hand paper making was actually set up here by the Japanese. We searched for a traditional method of paper making, but were unsuccessful. However, in 1980 in Boston, our Korean friend and paper maker Kim Yeon Yeon demonstrated the old technique for us.
In the, this traditional technique in Korea that we were unable to find, the mold is vertical with a bamboo screen. There's no decal or decal sticks used. To form the sheet of paper, Kim makes a first dip into the vat and pulls the mold toward him so the pulp covers the entire screen for the first layer. Subsequent layers are formed by dipping the mold into the pulp, first from left to right and then right to left. More layers are added for thicker paper. Notice the rope attached to the mold for balancing. In Korea, the paper maker has a log on his vat and he balances the mold on the log for this maneuver. When the sheet is complete, it is cooched onto the post without any separators. Kim actually brought his own beaten mulberry from Korea, but he used my homegrown hibiscus manioc as the formation aid. Now our scene shifts to Europe. The mold consists of a wood frame with a wire screen attached, either in a laid pattern emulating the bamboo screen of Asia, or it's in a wove pattern with no design, and a decal fits on top of the frame. To form the sheet, the paper maker makes one dip into the vat toward him and disperses the pulp over the screen from side to side or front to back or both, throwing off the excess at the back. In a large sheet, this looks like a wave. Two people work together, a vat man and a coocher, and a separating felt is used between the sheets. The fiber used here is cotton with no formation aid and that's typical of the European papermaking methods. At Hale Mill, we see similar sheet formation. Again, there are two men at the vat working in unison. And seeing the duo acting in perfect coordination, both here and at Wokey Hall, I, the whole performance seems like a papermaker's ballet. Now we've noticed uh, in Asia that the papermakers that use the poured technique use different hand motions to disperse the pulp on the mold. And the same is true in Europe. The idea is the same, but they, when they disperse the pulp, use different hand motions or different manipulations of the mold in order to disperse it properly. In the background there, if you recognize him, there's Ramy Green to the right of me. He was still the partially involved with Hale Mill at the time that we were there. The oldest mill that I've seen in Europe that has an unbroken tradition is Velke Lozini, founded in 1396. Here we see just a little different action in sheet formation. The paper maker dips the mold into the pulp and pulls it toward himself as usual, but then he disperses the pulp from front to back and throws off the excess afterwards. You have to watch him carefully to see him do that. You can see that, and then after he throws off the excess, he does a sidewise shake a few times before he pushes the mold to the coocher. See, he threw it off first, and then he did the sideways motion. In conclusion, I want to say that I have presented a number of variations in sheet formation. 
Sometimes they're closely related to the molds on which the sheets are formed. But the point is that there are many, many variations, both in pulp pouring and in the dipping method of making paper.